A lot of people do not get to watch my lives. So I re-upload my lives so people can watch them. If you already seen this live, just hit the like button and just chill. My mama told you to stop going over there. Stop beating up your baby mama. Yeah, it's, it's on now. You about to find out today what's real and what's not real. Oh, yeah, you about to find out. So here's the scene. Hey, girl, I want to see my kids. Well, you can't see your kids. Why not? You know why. Because the last time you the last time you came over here, I I end up losing some teeth. Man, you should never been talking back to me. Don't give you no right to be putting your hands on me. Like I said, you should don't talk back to me. I'm a man. You ain't no man. All right, girl, when I come over there, I'm telling you. So he hangs up the phone, get in his car, and he goes to his baby mama house. Bam, bam, bam. Open up, girl. Open up. Get out of here. You're not. Boom. He kicked the door in. Get out of here. Get out of here. His two kids right there on the couch crying. They see daddy bust through the door. Mama fly on the floor and he grabbed like, didn't I tell you to stop? Didn't I tell you to stop disrespecting me? So then he commenced to abuse her. Right? While the kids is right there. He leave the house. Matter of fact, before he even leave the house, the four-year-old little boy go over there and start hitting on him. Leave her alone, daddy. Leave her alone. So he finally he finally leaves and he goes back to his mama house. 40 minutes later, it's a knock on the door. Aggressive knock. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Columbus PD, open up. The mama come to the door. What's going on, officers? Where's your son? Oh, he he he's in the basement. We need to talk to him right now. Hey, son, come upstairs. The police want to talk to you. Dang, mama. Why you tell them I was here? They just want to talk to you. You so-and-so? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. They yank him up out the house. Muscle him, drag him all the way to the patrol car. Or oh, you like hitting women? You like hitting women? Give him a couple elbow shots to the gut. Matter of fact, when they open the police door, you know when they put their hands on your head and make you go down and push you in there? Nah, they removed the hand and pushed them in there. You like to hit women? Yeah. Now you now you about to be in here with the big boys. So they take him on down to the county. He get to the county. Some of these guards down there, they don't feel that domestic if they don't feel that domestic violence towards women crap at all. They they don't feel it at all. So when they get when they get in the process, they mishandle them, all that. You know when you get locked up and you go through processing, you go to a room, they make you strip, bend over, spread them cheeks, and cough. Yeah. So he had to go through that, not once but twice, just for the humiliation, right? So now. He get out of he get out in the processing. Now the woman that's doing his intake, she already peaked game. She know why he in there. Matter of fact, her baby sister just lost her life a couple years ago to domestic violence. So while she classifying him, she say, "Do you feel like you um want to hurt yourself?" He like, "No, nah, no, nah, not at all." She writes. Yeah, he feel like he's a danger to himself and he's going to hurt himself. So after the classification, you know what happens? They strip him butt booty naked, put him in a green suit. We call it the Bam Bam suit, right? You naked, they put you in this green type of rubbery suit and they put you in this cold padded room. And there he go. Ice cold. This is just the beginnings of his troubles. We got nine people in the building. Hit that like button and stop being stingy. So now he up in the hole where he up in this Bam Bam suit in this rubber room. Man, I don't supposed to be in here, man. I don't supposed to be in here. They don't. Shut up. Be quiet. So 
he go through this for about five or six hours, and they end up putting him in a bullpen. That's cool. As soon as he get in the bullpen, he instantly get on the phone. He call his mama. Ring, 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 ring. Do you accept the charges from blah, 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 county jail? If yes, press one. Hello? Mama. What's going on? Hey, hey mama, I need for you to get in contact with my baby mama and, and tell her do not press charges. Well, what did you do to her? What did you do to her? And I didn't do nothing to her, mama. You did do something to her. I seen her eye. What did you do to her? Man, come on, mama. Just, just do this for me, mama, please. Mama, please do this for me, please. I don't know about this, man. You, 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 you really messed her up. Mama, please tell her don't press charges on me. Now, at this point in time, there's other guys that's in this, there's other guys in the bullpen, and they can hear this conversation. Some of these guys got mothers out there. Some of these guys got sisters out there, and they hear the conversation. One plus one equals two. So they're hearing that this dude talking about telling this girl not to press charges for him beating her down, right? So some of these guys, they 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 not feeling the conversation. They end up, he all up on the fall. Yeah, mama, please, man. Please, could you please tell him, don't press charges on me, please. Please, man, I want to be up in here, mama, please. I'll try to talk to her. I'll try to talk to her. You have 30 seconds left. Mama, 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 Um, did, did you give me a lawyer? Can you give me a lawyer? I don't know. You know I'm on. You know I'm on disability. I don't got that much money. But mama, please, man, just get me out of here, man. You have five seconds. Click, phone card, disconnect. Dang. Put the phone. Put the phone back on the jack. He's sitting there. Hey, bro. Let me get that spot. It's, it's a. It's a lot of other um, room in here for you to sit somewhere else. No, no, no. I want that spot right there. I want to hold down the phone. Oh, okay, no problem, bro. So he gets up and he walk off. Dude, go over there where he's at. Hey, bro, I need this spot. What you mean you need this spot? You just said, I don't care what I said. Get up. Hey, bro, you can't talk. Bam! Punch you right in the mouth. Man, bro, 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 why you hit me, bro? Bro, that didn't even call for it. No, I heard your, I heard your phone conversation. You say so you like to hit women, huh? You like to hit women, right? Get him another one. Bam. Come on, bro. Bro, stop, stop. See, that's what's wrong with these clowns. I done seen it day in and day out. You get these guys that come in there for domestic violence. They beat the living dog crap out of their woman. They baby mamas, they wives, they girlfriend. This dog the woman. But then when a man put his hands on you, it's, oh, bro, bro. Now you trying to cop a plea. Now you trying to explain. What was that same energy when you was beating the crap out of that woman? Yeah. Let me tell y'all what he did to his baby mama. When he was in there beating her up, her eye socket was fractured. This woman's eye was bulging. We ain't even going, we, we, we haven't even got to that, y'all. Wait till we get to the court. Wait till we get to the court, to the court hammers. Wait until we get to the trial. Yeah, where until we get to that? But no, right now we in a bullpen. We got 20, 20 people in the building. Hit that like button. Stop being stingy. So now, now you got him in there copping, please. Oh, bro, bro, please, chill. Chill, don't hit me no more, please. Man, shut your mouth. Man, shut, shut your mouth. Then another dude come over there. Oh, this dude, this the dude that be hitting on girls. Man, shut up. So they they, they beating up and beating up in the corner. Now he trying to get up and try to run the bang on the glass, but they keep grabbing him and bringing him back over there in the corner and just whipping him out like he was beating up that girl. Right? So now the guards finally catch wind of him. Hey, y'all, they bang on the glass. Hey, y'all, cut that out. Cut that out. So they like, all right, all right, we stop, we stop. We we good, we good. Sarge, you come in there. He like, you need medical attention. Man, please get me out of here. Please get me out. Get you out of where? And this uh, Man, they in there beat me up, man. They going to try to kill me up in here. They going to try to kill me up in here. Hey, what, what you in here for? Man, me and my girl got into it. Oh, yeah, you that guy. Nah, don't come to jail. Don't commit crimes. Keep your hands off of women. Deuces. The sergeant walk out. Dude like, man, man. So he over there whimpering. 
another guy come over there like, hey, you knew better. You knew better. Why, why, why'd you hit your girl for? The other two that the other two dudes that attacked him earlier, they stand up by real close. They listen to him. He like, man, man, my girl, she was just tripping. She was tripping on me. She wouldn't let me see my kids. So when I went over there, she spazzed out on me, and the cops came and locked me up for it. Dude, like, word. He like, yeah, man. I'm telling you, man. You know how they always trying to um be. They 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 don't want to hear the man part of the story. They just want to hear the woman part of the story. So he like, oh, okay, okay, cool, cool. So um, did you hit it? No, bro. I told you. Bam. He hit him in his mouth. Bam, bro, man. Come on. Then the other two dudes come over there and they get to working him out. They stretch him out. Bam, bam. He wasn't even fight back at all. He done boiled up into a shell. Come on, y'all, stop hitting me. Stop hitting me. Please, man, y'all, stop hitting me, man. I ain't do nothing. Yeah, you should have thought about that when you was projecting that same energy on that woman, punk. So now, so now, hold up, y'all. I got a dry throat. Hit that like button. What's up, y'all? What's up, Deborah? What's up, King Nico? What's up, Lisa? What's up, Brian? 773 Rick? No Way Jose? Chill Mo Beats. What's up, y'all? Yeah. It's on, y'all. Hit that like button. We live, baby. What's up, Star Pepper? We live, y'all. I'm giving y'all a story. This is hey, this is a story for y'all right now. Check this out. Before we even go any further, tomorrow I'm going out of town and I'm finishing shooting this movie. It's gonna take me about five days. To wrap this movie up, it's coming out December 24th, okay? If you're not a member, make sure you become a member and join my page so you can watch the movie. I'm not putting it out for the public till February. So become a member, join my page so you can watch the movie, okay? I will release different content throughout this week, so don't worry. There'll be videos coming out, but I won't be going live because I'll be out of town, out of state, shooting this movie for y'all, all right? So they're in there beating them up, and the guards rushing there, pulling these cats off of them. He all curled up. So, But when the guards grab him, oh, they grabbing him like, bam, bam, just jackhammering him up out of the cell. He all bleeding out the mouth, do eye closed, got knots on top of his face and his head and all that. So now, what's up, life with Cynthia? So now, he like, he like, man, you're just wrong, man. How y'all gonna let them do that to me, man? How y'all gonna let them do that to me? So, man, y'all supposed to protect me. Yeah, where was that protection at when you was beating the hell out your woman? Where was that protection at then, right? So he like, he like, man, this wrong, man. I ain't even hit her. I ain't even hit her, right? So one of the police that brought him in, he already dropped a dime on him. He dropped a dime on him already. He told the guards, he told the guards, like, yeah, man, he messed her up bad, man. Fra fractured her eye socket. Girl, I was bulging out of her freaking eye. Her eye done swollen up with blood and pus. That's how bad he beat her. See, let me tell you about these coward men out there. There's some men out there that will beat the living breaks out of a woman. Beat the crap out of a woman. But as soon as another man confront them, then it's, oh, I'm copping the plea. Oh, oh, oh I'm, I, I got, let, can I explain myself? No, explain yourself the same way you was explaining your fist to that girl's face. Explain that, right? Explain it. That's crazy. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, every time, so, so, no, 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 cut it out, cut it out. Nah, he know what he did. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We know what he did. Yeah, he yeah, he here. He he right he, he right here where he's supposed to be at. What's up, Amelia? What's up, Chris? What's up, No Way, Jose? You right here where you supposed to be at. You like to put your hands on women? Well, there's people in here that want to put their hands on you like you put your hand on that woman. The crazy part is when the first dude popped off on you, you should have popped off on him. But nah, that's how a lot of these coward ass men be. Beat up a woman all day long, all day, feel real big with your chest all puffed out and all that. But as soon as her brother or her daddy or a cousin or a male friend approach you with that same energy, it's always, oh, no, nah, bro. Oh, no, nah, bro. It ain't like that. It ain't like that. Oh, you know how these women. No, nah, cut that out. 
Let me tell you what my mama told me growing up. She said, if you ever felt like that you even think about want to put your hands on a woman, walk away. Just walk away. Walk away. Okay. Now, there's one thing if a woman, and, and I'm going to play devil's advocate here. If a woman, a woman should not be putting her hands on a man, neither. All right. We're going to get that squared away. We're going to get that straightened out right now. A woman should not be putting her hands on a man neither. I do not agree, okay? But we're going to keep it funky and we're going to keep it real. I don't agree with a woman when they say that if a woman man enough to put her hands on a man, that she should be able to get hands put back on her. No, us men are superior in strength, okay? We can take these punches from these women. However, this is my advice. If you got a woman that got you cornered and she slapping on you and punching on you, okay, I get if you got a reflex and you're like, man, get off me or something like that. Cool. But I'm not talking about boiling your hands up and beating this woman down, okay? If you got to, just like with me and my girl used to get into it, when she get to hitting me because I was out here being a dog in the street, right? And she... Did, she couldn't take it no more and she come to lay hands on me. What I would do, I would just would grab her, grab her by the arms, try to hold her down so she won't hit you no more. Don't boil your fists up and hit a woman, you damn coward. Yeah. And most of us dudes out there, we be having that coming to us. We cause all these problems. We can't keep it home, right? We can't stay home. We love running the streets. Got a good woman. I, I'm not like that no more. Got a good woman at home. And you out here playing in the streets. Come on, y'all. Hit that like button and stop playing games. 43 funky people in the building. And you mean to tell me we only got 25 likes? The people, that's you're not funky if you hit that like button. But everybody else that haven't hit that like button, you're funky and you're trifling. Now hit that like button. And like I said, y'all, I'm going out of town tomorrow, and I'm shooting a video. You better become a member so you can watch the video because I'm not putting it out for the public. It's coming out December 24th. Let's get back to the story. So they got them handcuffed right on the bench. They got them handcuffed on the bench. So he, he like, man, man, this ain't right, man. This ain't right, man. Y'all got me messed up. Y'all got me messed up, man. How y'all gonna let them do that to me like that? Man, this 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 is so messed up. The guy like, yo, keep your hands off of women. Keep your hands off the keep your hands off of these girls. We know what you did. I seen the police report, man. What was you trying to do to her? Man, listen, I just want to see my kids. And she acted, she just went crazy on me. Well, okay. All right, whatever. So we gonna fast forward to the trial. Now, he done convinced her to drop the charges. It, we know how that go. We know, baby, I'm sorry. Y'all know that jail talk. Baby, I'm sorry. I would never do it again. I don't know what I, I don't know why I flipped out on you like that. Dude, you, you, you've been beating this girl for the last four years. You know why you did it. Because you get, you get a sense of power every time you put your hand on this defenseless woman. That, come on, man. So now, baby, I'm so sorry. I would never do it again. Matter of fact, I'm sorry about everything since I've been in here, baby. I, I just had, I, 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 I done got close to the Bible. I, uh, matter of fact, where's the Bible at? Here you go. He like this. Every day he reading the Bible. Every day he reading the Bible. And God forgave those who would turn to him. Right? Every day. Now he reading the Bible while locked up. And Jesus saves Luke. Oh, this is a good story. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he done became. Now he done. Now he reading the Bible, right? The only reason why he reading the Bible, because he know that's keeping the other inmates off of him. A lot of guys, they pick up that good book, right? Oh, I'm a Christian. I, I don't I don't want no problems. Uh, I, 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 uh, I, I love God. Stop playing games. Because as soon as, if you get released, you leaving that Bible where it's at. Right? He done convinced the girl to drop the charges. She ain't about to show up to court. But guess what? The state picked up the charges. Gotcha. The state picked it up. He looking at two years. 
It's looking bad, real bad. The prosecutor, yo, yo, it's election time too, baby. Oh yeah, it's election time too. So y'all already know what time it is. Yo, yeah. So he take the plea deal. They give him eight months. That's the end of that video. Now we about to get to the real video. Y'all ready? Matter of fact, we not going to get to the real video until we get 40 likes. We not going to get to the real vo video until we get 40 likes. Come on, let's get five more likes. Y'all not finna, y'all is not about to have me sit up here and run my big mouth over the internet and I can't get 40 likes? Come on. Come on. I, I'm not asking for much. I'm just asking for four likes. God dang. Y'all are real tight. Come on, man. I'm giving y'all these crazy stories. Y'all is real tight with them likes tonight. Everybody in the comment section, y'all say hit that like button. Everybody in the comment section, put hit that like button. Dang, where's the love at? Where's the love? Come on, y'all. Hit that dang like button. We just need one more like. Hey, listen. Y'all be talking about, oh, he always begging for likes. He always begging for, you dang right I'm going to beg for the likes. And, and by the way, since I'm begging, hold on. Since, since I'm begging, hold on, y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to beg for the likes. But you know what? I'm going to beg for something else, too. Oh, yeah. I'm begging tonight. I'm about to go out of town, y'all. So I'm begging. Oh, yeah. We got the 40 likes. We got 42 likes. Now, listen, y'all. I ain't going to beg for the cash app, but I just put the cash app up and it's pent up. It's pent up at the top. So there it go right there. If y'all want to, if y'all want to bless y'all favorite YouTuber, the cash app is pent up at the top. Now, Oh, hey, Lisa, I want to thank you, Lisa, for blessing the cash app. And Eva, I want to thank you for blessing the cash app, too. All right? So now, let's get into the real story. Oh, yeah, we, we finna get there. So now, you got a dude named Terrence, a so-called gangster, a so-called thug, right? He's one of them part-time dealers. When it's income tax time, he always, somehow, some way, he convinced his baby mama to hold him down with a couple thousands for him to flip. He, he, he's a part-time dealer, a, a tax time dealer, right? He ended up getting caught up. He ended up getting caught up. He ended up copping from an undercover cop, dead to rights. So he get locked up. Of course, he, he's not going to accept the plea deal. He done been he been locked up twice already. Gun charges, conspiracy, all this and all that. This is third time. Third time felon. Okay. You would think by now he would have learned this lesson. No, uh-uh. He ain't learned this lesson. Hence the thumbnail. So he get on the phone. The jail phone. Hey, bro. Yeah, what's up? Hey, bro. Listen, I need for you to go to my house, go to the backyard. Don't worry, the dog hey, is not gonna bite you. Under the dog house, I need for you to grab that. You know what? And move it. He's saying all this on the jail phone. You know when they tell you that your call, that the calls are being recorded, dummy. What'd you say? It's in the backyard under the dog house. I need, I need for you to go grab that, please. Grab that and take it here. There's Terrence telling dummy number one this. All along, the detective on the other end of that phone call that's being recorded, okay, under the dog house, go send somebody to go sit, sit on that. Bet. So he goes and go to go to dude's house, go to the house, move it, and he find the work. 
He picks the work up. He go back to his car. He get in his car. Cop car. Boom, boom. They, 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 they converge on him. Bam, bam. Get out the car. Get out the car. He get out the car. Man, what's going on? Man, what's going on? I ain't did nothing. Put your hands behind your back. Get your hands up on your head right now. Put your hands behind your back right now, right? So off to jail, there he go. Hold on, I'm going to let y'all call in. Just wait a minute. I'm going to let y'all call in. Let me finish this up. So Terrence, that's a part-time dealer around tax season, gets caught up. Then he calls dummy number one. Tell him to go get the work from under the doghouse. Get him jammed up. Now both of them is in the county. Gotcha. So now, Terrence and dummy number one is in the same pod together. Man, bro, I think you set me up, man. Why, why you ain't tell me that, man? That's the stupidest talk, right? Bro, I didn't set you up, man. I don't know how they found out. Man, bro, it just seemed real suspicious, man. Man, it just seemed real suspicious how they just they just knew like they was waiting on me. Man, I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't know. Maybe they were just following you. I don't know. Man, bro, you want to do me like that, man. I wouldn't do you like that, bro, man. And we, we, I, I want to do you like that. All right, man. Well, let's just stick. We, we, uh, okay, man. Whatever, man. Whatever. Get back on the phones, right? He calling this girl, hey baby, hey man, uh, man, tell the kids I love them. Um, I, I need for you to, you know, bring some money, put some money on my books, and all this and that, right? Then he get to talking, hey baby, um, is is anybody around you? Here you go, baby. Is anybody around you? So he get close to the phone. Baby, is anybody around you? No, no, I'm in the kitchen. Ain't nobody here. Hey, baby, listen. Hey, I was holding, I, I got a gun, okay? This in the basement. I need for you to go downstairs. It's in a Nike box behind the dryer, okay? Go get that gun and go throw it in the river because I'm, I'm holding it for CJ. What? I'm not about to, baby, you got to because if they end up hitting the house, why would they hit our house? I don't know, baby. I'm just saying. There's a gun in there that CJ used on somebody. He took somebody's life a while back, and I was holding a gun for him. Oh, okay, okay. You have 30 minutes left. Oh, okay, baby, baby, I love you. Let's take care of that for me, okay, baby? I love you. I right, love you too, baby. They replay that jail call. Detective, okay. CJ killed somebody a couple weeks ago ish the gun is in a nike shoe box go sit on that house they sit on the house they sit on the house they sit on the house here go baby mama come outside with the shoe box she doesn't get in the car she take it right outside and put it in a dumpster she go back in the house police Rolls right up, open the dumpster, look in, bingo. They leave. They go get a warrant from the judge. The judge signed it. At this particular time, there's no no-knock warrants. Bam! Boom! Police, police, police. Get down, get down. What's going on? What's going on? Get down. Get down. Is anybody else in the house? Is anybody else in the house? No, it's just me. It's just me. They got her on her stomach, got her hands wrapped behind her back, all that zip tied her, right? Got her up out of there. Now she going to the county. Two detectives go pull him out, out of the block. Yo, dummy number one, come here. We got to talk to you. All right, here I come. No, we need to come right now. So he leave out the pot. They got, they got his baby mama right there. And he see her. He like, what the heck going on? So they they put them both in the room. She, she like, baby, baby, um, 
I don't know what happened, man. The police, they not telling me what's going on. They ain't telling me what's going on, baby. He like, he like, man, what, what is she doing here? Right? What you doing here? I don't know. When I went outside to go take the, you know what, and put it in the dumpster. And about two hours later, they come kicking in the door, man. What, what, what's going on, man? I don't know, baby. But don't say nothing. Don't say nothing, baby. Don't say nothing at all. All right. All right. Well, I mean, I don't know what to do. Well, just don't say nothing. Okay, whatever. Detective come pull her out. They say, hey, now listen. You, we was told by your girl, your girl that just left out of here, that you murdered somebody with this. Bam! Put the pistol on the table in a plastic bag. Man, I ain't never see that before. Listen, stop playing with me. I'm a detective now. Stop playing with me. Look at my face. Do it look like I'm playing with you? You ever did time before? How old are you? Are you 29? You ever been locked up before? Yeah, I did a couple times. Yeah, I've, I've been to the county once or twice for, you know, the D, DWI, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me tell you something. Matter of fact, come here. Let me let, let me say something to you. There's bodies on this gun. Your wife told me and somebody else told me that you killed somebody with this gun. You're going away for a long time. You will never touch another woman in your life unless you tell me where you got this gun from. Man, I, 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 I don't know what you're talking about. You, you don't know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about? No, man, I don't know. See, see, dude, dude ain't used to that type of pressure, right? He should have been, first of all, y'all said that they already, they already said that I did it. So why would you want to know where I got the gun from? Right. If if y'all already know that they that's but that, that my girl and somebody else said that I killed somebody with this gun, why would you why why you want to know where I got it from? See, these these are the things that people don't think about when they under that light and under that pressure. So the detective working them, he's like, All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I'll tell you the truth. Detective say, Hold on, before you tell me the truth. I'm going to let you know this also. Right now, there's a dude that's upstate named Sebo. Okay? He like him under the age of 30 years old. And you, you got nice skin. Oh, yeah, you got some nice, you got some nice skin. And I'm going to tell you, you his type too. And I ain't got to tell you what's going to happen when you get up there. But just put it this way. Um, You ever made a man curl Toes curl? Uh-uh. Well, you might find out. You better tell me what's going on. So now, he like, okay. Okay, I'll tell you what happened. A guy named CJ. He got it. He got it to it with this dude named BK. Okay? And I, I guess CJ wanted to rob BK and I guess it, I guess BK just um he fought back or something and he ended up shooting him and then he come to my house and he gave me the gun and say that this hold this down from I didn't want to I didn't want to take it I didn't want to take it matter of fact I fear for my life because CJ's a killer and I felt like if I if I didn't do what he told me to do that he was going to do something to me so I, I guess I I did take the gun I did take the gun I did. But I had nothing to do with it. He got a detective. Okay. So CJ killed unknown Mark BK. Oh, and when was this? Man, this was four weeks ago, man. It was four weeks. I was watching the Super Bowl game. And, you know, I just got a bang on the door. I was eating some hot wings. And actually, you know, I heard a bang on the door when I came to the door. You know, that, that, that's I, I'm telling you exactly what happened. And you sure that's it? Ain't nothing else. No, no. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you know of any other crimes that CJ have committed? Well, um, I remember one time I was in a car with him and he did a drive-by with somebody. I 
All right. All right. So, so am I free to go? Eh. Eh. Give me a minute. So the detective leave out. Detective leave out. Talk to his captain. Listen, Cap. Okay, so this is all this is all stemming from this drug. So we got we got um Terrence on his drug case. Okay, we got him. We got him on a phone call. We got dummy number one also, okay, for the dog house, for the dog house incident. But then dummy number one also put us on this dude named CJ. Okay. So we gonna we gonna cut the girlfriend. We're gonna cut her. She out of here. But she gonna we gonna need her to testify also. All right, and we're going to keep dude in here until we get CJ. Cool. Matter of fact, let's see, can we get CJ? Let's let let's have him call CJ, right? Let's 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 see, let's see, can we get CJ on the phone? Detective, come here. I got good news and I got bad news. Scratch that, y'all. Detectives go back. The, the, the detective go in there. I got bad news. And I got even bad news. You're going to jail for life. That's number one. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. You're going to jail for life. Okay? Unless you get CJ on the telephone. Huh? Yeah, yeah. I need for you to call. Matter of fact, here. I need for you to call CJ. And I want you to tell him. to Get him to talk about this murder. Get him a, to talk about this gun. Man, no, man. I, no, 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 so, so do you want life or what? Do you want to go to jail for the rest of your life? Do you? No, 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 no. But well, I need for you to get him on the phone right now. I'm going to answer the questions in a minute. <laughs> Matter of fact, I'll answer your questions now. Thank you, Miss Bond. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, Candace do have her own channel, and actually, um, when you go on my page, if you go all the way down to the bottom, you will see her um, page, it says Candace Talks, or when you go to her video, look in the description, and it's a link that's in the description that you can click on, and it'll take you to her channel. Also, me and her just did a couple, we just did a couple of interviews also, and they'll be out sometimes next week. Um, yeah. So now, okay. So now, he like, he like, um, he like, okay, okay, okay. So he calls CJ number. Hey, 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 CJ. Yeah, what's up, cuz? Hey, um, hey, when you coming to go? Um, when you coming to get that? Man, didn't I tell you to stop asking me about that? I'ma come get it when I get it. Click. Hello, 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 hello. He, he hung up. Call him back. Where we at? Hello, CJ. Man, hey, why is you keep calling? Who number is this? Oh, this. I, I just got a new number. What, what, what's up with it? Hey, I was just wondering, you know, my girl tripping, you know, she she don't want the gun in the house. You told your girl about the gun? Man, dude, what's wrong with you? No, no. You know, she, when she was washing clothes the other day, um, she 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 seen the box, she went in it, and you know, she spashed out on me. Hey, bro, where's the gun at? Where's the gun? Oh, it's it, it's it's at the house. It, it's still at the house. That's why I called. Hey, listen. Take that gun, and I need for you to get rid of it. Oh, 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 what, what you want me to do with it? I said get rid of it, right? All right, bro. Uh, okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to go throw it in the river. I'm going to throw it in the river. All right, dude. Don't call me no more. Matter of fact, where you at? Oh, um, um I'm about to. Why, why are you stuttering? Hang up, hang up. Click. Man, 
Phone keep ringing. Ring, 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 ring. Oh, shoot. All right, that's all we needed. You can go. Huh? What you mean I can go? You can go. Man, what I I what you mean? I said you can go. You're free to go. Man, but y'all ain't gonna help me? Y'all ain't gonna protect me from K from CJ? But what? There's what what you what do you need our help for? You I mean what? Man, I already no, 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 no. Y'all don't understand, man. If he suspects that I'm that I'm talking to y'all, he's gonna kill me. Well, hey, well, hey, well, I, I tell you what, you can help yourself out. You need to testify against him. Everything that you have told me, I need for you when we go to court to say everything. I need to put it all on the line. So he's like, you know what? Um, I need I need for y'all to protect my girl too. Like, could, could y'all go get her? Yeah, she's still in the lobby. She's still in the lobby. Well, could, could y'all make sure she's safe too? Eh, we'll see. We'll see. But you better tell her. You better tell. You better tell us everything that we that we want to know even things that you don't we want to hear it all put it all on the table all right so y'all fast forward 30 minutes later he in there just running his mouth can i get a cigarette yeah you can get a cigarette hold on Just tell him, just run in his mouth, telling it all, right? This should go on for a whole hour. He told everything. We're going to fast forward it. Fast forward. He, for, 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 for dummy number one, cooperating. He gets off scot-free, scot-free. He don't get no time, no charges. His girlfriend, no time, no charges. Terrence, for his cases, he's a two-time felon, right? Since he's a two-time felon, and for his participation of whatever he did, they end up giving him eight years, eight years flat. CJ, Mr. Killer. I'm gonna make a video about Mr. CJ too, all right? I'm gonna make a I'm gonna make a prison story video about Mr. CJ. So y'all stay tuned for that. That's gonna be out. Uh it'll be out in, in like another week. Cause I gotta go shoot this video. I'm going out of time to shoot this movie, all right? Um so y'all be looking out for that. Let's get to this comment section. Y'all can call in now, too. If y'all want to call in, y'all can call in. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, if y'all want to call in, call in. Y'all know the number. Y'all know the number. I post it up. If y'all want to call in, call in. We can talk. Let's see what's going on here. Yo, Devin Branch, thank you for that cash app. I appreciate that. I want to thank everybody that been hitting that like button too. Y'all know it. I want to thank everybody that that um blessed the super chat. Oh, it ain't over with y'all. We it ain't over. I'm about to post the number up. Hold up. I want to thank everybody that been hitting that like button. And I want to thank everybody that blessed the cash app. Now I'm about to put the number up, y'all, so y'all make sure y'all call in so we can talk. All right, there it go right there. There it go right there. All right, y'all, the number is up up y'all I'm gonna pin it to the top where is it at there you go yo 
Jamel Great, Jamal Great. I appreciate that cash app. Um, De Devin, Devin Brent, I appreciate that. Rose Maples, I appreciate that. And Rod, I appreciate that. And S. Pierce, and James Shosho, and Cedric Loins, I appreciate that. Come on, y'all. I post up the number. Let's go. Here we go. Like I say, y'all, stay off them jail phones, man. Stay off them jail phones. You sit up there and you commit crimes, right? The police never... The police don't even have to do their job no more. All they got to do is look at your Instagram and your Facebook page. The police don't never got to do their job no more. What's going on? What's up, Dante? Hey, this is Sonetta. Uh, yeah, I wasn't going to call in first because I was like, man, I missed half the story when I left out the room. <clears throat> but I know that last story you did with the prostitutes and stuff, yeah. Like, I've, I've been there, bro. Like, I ain't gonna lie. Mm. And it was real tough. I was like 14 at the same time, too. Went through the same stuff she went through. Oh, you talking so about I, that, that that one video, that interview yeah. video? Mm hmm. When, yeah, when she, went, um, when she was on the corner, it's always she was down on the corner, but you know, on the side of the road. And that guy was, um, someone was interviewing her. Yeah. You know, asking the questions and stuff like that. I know it ain't got nothing really too much to do with this video. Cause I, but the one thing I want to say is, yeah, I went through domestic violence abuse too. I know what that is about too. Um, you know, people just be thinking they can do things to hurt people and they won't come back on them. But I mean, like I said, I got bruises to prove it. And the women that went through that, they got bruises, bruises that they will remember. But what's the important thing is, is when you get back in touch with God, God will tell you, man, you know what? What's in your past is in your past, mm. you know, and you can keep going forward. You know what I mean? You won't have to remember the things that, you know, you might, you know, some things might bring things back, but you might not want to remember those type of things. But, you know, what I do is to keep pushing is I keep, like, thinking of positive things to do with my time and my life. Even when I'm going through something or struggle or whatnot, I don't want to go back down memory lane, mm. um, back, you know, being on the corner, uh, hustling, nah, I, you know. So I moved forward, you know, past something different. That's what had gave me the capability to get jobs. Because mm. <laughs> I was like, but I don't want to live that life no more, going to different hotels, motels. It wasn't, it wasn't cool. It wasn't cool at all, I'll tell you. Some of the places had bed bugs. You don't want to deal with that. Well, you know what? You know, you know what? Yeah. Um... Well, let's matter of fact, um, we we gonna we gonna put a spin on this. You, okay, th and this is for th for the young women out there that might find themselves in the situation that you was in. So let me ask you this: how did how did it get to that point where where you ended up in that predicament of even being out there in the streets like that? Well, uh. First, I was uh, staying with my mom. Well, me, I got three brothers, so it was me, my brothers, and my mom, and she had a boyfriend. Um, she left her husband. They got divorced or whatever, so we ended up moving to the hood. So we went from the suburbs to the hood, stayed um, in the, you know, Oregon area, I'd say that. And we were staying there for so long. My mom, I started seeing her go through a lot of the uh, abuse with him and stuff like that. He was stealing money from her so he can buy weed and everything. Mm. And he was just going, he was just doing a bunch of stuff. And he was, he was actually touching on me too. He was molesting on me. I mean, touching on me, like stuff like that, you know, but he had it on his own daughter, but his daughter didn't live with him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like through the time he was always in and out, he was cheating on my mom, stuff like that. My mom kept her head up. She was always working. But when she was barely a house, she had to pick up a second job. So when she did that, it was like nobody was barely there. I was kind of like an in-home person until I started seeing all that domestic violence stuff going on. I started getting rebellious. Mm. I was going to school, but I was getting talked about. I was getting bullied. It was a lot of things happening to me. I didn't have the finest 
clothes and shoes. I had the pro wings on. I mean, it was a lot of stuff. Mm. You know, um, I decided that, you know, that quiet person, that person that liked to sing in a room and write poetry, I didn't want to be that person no more. I ran out to the streets. I met grown men. Grown men started pulling up at my mom's house. My mom hated that. And she we got in fights about that. When I told her um, that her boyfriend had raped me, she, she didn't take it very lightly because she started to develop a, a drinking uh, problem at the time, mm. you know. But she's she's she cool now. She ain't like it. she used to be. But like you know, that was a period when she was going through a bunch of abuse. So she had to fight these dudes off of her, like the dudes that she had real relationships with. And we had to watch that. We had to jump on them and stuff. Mm. You know, my brothers. I was the main one protecting my brothers and them. You know what I'm saying? But like they would always be at the community center, so it'd be just me in the house most of the time. So. Like, when my mom would go to work, that's what happened. You know, I, I was around gang members, started going around gang members, like Crips, and, you know, then I, I've been around Bloods, you know. So, and then I found out some of them people I was with around mm-hmm. knew my dad. <laughs> like, so, I guess the question. I didn't even know my dad. Uh, I guess the okay. thing the thing is, okay, so when did when did you get introduced to that lifestyle where you ended up over the street and um and was it prostituting was 13 th- yeah, uh, it was S- it was 13 uh, 13 14 prostitution then um now, after that it was uh escorting now now when okay so when you was 13 14 was it that you were just um, talking to older men or you were just out there on the corner no nah, i was i was out there talking like I was around older men all the time. Like when it came to my mom's boyfriend, she thought he started introducing me to grown folks. Oh. You know, grown people, college people, like people in college and everything like that. Then his cousin started introducing me to people that he went to school with. When I ended up when they put put me back into school, his cousin is the one that put me back into high school. So like but he was still met he was still messing with me too. You know what I'm saying? Like both of them were. Mm. And then I started getting around in college friends and stuff like that. And I was just very rebellious. I didn't want to go home. I used to sneak out of the house because I didn't want to go home and see my mom, you know, go through what she was going through. I, I would try to be there for her. I was like, man, I'm going to go hustle. I'm going to try to get some money so I can help my mom out because this man would take the money from my, from my mom. It came to a point where the water shut off. You know, we had to borrow water and stuff from the neighbors. It just, it, it just got bad, like, you know. But, um... After a while, like years later, man, I, I found out the hard way when I met a, I met a dude that um he yeah, I was seventeen he was about he said he was like twenty something I didn't take that as being too old but he was really thirty two and he ended up being my son's father hmm. um he was a pimp too he he pimped me out and he he was abusive you know well sometimes, you know what I'm saying well let's I I, I wanna um uh, because I I know there could be some young girls listening, or there might be somebody that might share this live. And, you know, from your perspective, what was some of the signs? Like, what was the signs, if you think back, like, that that let you know, like, okay, this dude ain't really right, that this dude is taking advantage of me? And, and what, like, what was the first time that you realized that he, you know, pimped you out? Like, what was that first time? Uh, well, when I was uh, independently doing on my own, pulled up, you know, he, he took me to like, uh, he was, at the time, he was selling dope, you know, he was out there in the streets doing that, and uh, he had his own hustle going on, he took me to a crack house, and we were staying in the crack house, like, while he was selling, mm. and we were hanging, we were around booster and stuff, I knew then, there was something wrong with this, and the first, the very first time was mainly when he had ran across me, um, and I had money, you know, of my own. He was like, well, what you do? You know, he seen how I was dressed and everything like that. And he kept asking me all these questions, and I was already seasoned to know better. I was yeah. like, this man asking me all these questions. I already know this man know what I, what I am and how I roll, and I don't I don't want no pimp. I'm a, I'm a renegade. That's like how I would call him if I was a renegade. They don't want no pimp or nothing like that. So, you know, he, he tried to approach me in a different spot. That's how I knew it was something different because he kept, molest- you know, finessing me out of my money, you know mm. what I'm saying? Like, here, um, I'm going to hold on to all that that you made. I'm going to hold on to and, and And part of me would be like, nah, nah, I can't trust him to do that, you know, because he's going to run off with my son. He ain't going to come back. 
and things like that. But there's been a couple of times he tried to prove himself to be like a protector. Oh. So it was just like, I was an adolescent. I was just ignorant at the time. I didn't know, but I'm 35 years old now. But then I was, I, I was trying to be independent. Uh, excuse me, I didn't want everybody to know my business, but mm-hmm. everybody seemed to know my business because I was still going to school, but I was skipping school. I was out there, so people just knew me. And they was like, yeah, yeah, Sonetta, yeah, she, you know what I mean? She, you know, she doing this and that, you know what I'm saying? She getting money, but she up here with the wrong people. Like, mm. it was just too much. Now, but you were in a yeah, small so town like, or a big yeah. city? I, um, I was in a, a small city, like, um, you know what Oregon is, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it's like in the small cities, like where blazers are. Hmm, okay. Yeah, that's why I, that's basically where I say, like, that's where my upbringing was, kind of like, and then I start traveling out on my own. Like, I got in trouble so many times traveling on my own. I've been in the juvie system before. I, you know what I'm saying? I've been in the jail system before, too, you know, hmm. a couple of times. And then some of the stuff wasn't even my fault. I got set up by a, a dude. He just got out of juvie and he set me up downtown. He put a um, crack rock in a, in a dollar and put him in my pocket, acting like could I asked him for um, a dollar to get on a bus. Yeah. And he, you know what I'm saying? Basically, I got caught up because it was curfew time for, you know, minors couldn't be out there. 17 can't be out there on downtown. And um, so they pulled up and they was like, do you know him? And I was like, no, no, I do not know him. And at the time, he was talking to one of the people he sell to or whatever. And I was like, oh, my gosh, she's about to check all of our notes because she started checking people. She checked me. And that was the first time I ever got in trouble, ever. I had never been in the juvie system until that point. How long did you have to do for that? I, did, I didn't. I didn't. What happened was I had to go to court. I went to, I had got on probation. Um, so my head got out, right? Oh. So, um, then when I got out, I had got a bench warrant because I, I missed court. And I, the, and then the bench warrant, I had got picked up. I was pregnant. I was pregnant with my first son at the time. Oh. And they kept me in there for like almost 24 hours. And then I had got out, but then I had to go into a maternity home. A, it was a Christian maternity home called Bethany House. Yeah. I had to go in there. And then um, they are still on probation until they seen I was doing better and, you know, doing what they were telling me to do. But it was a long way coming for me being who I am today, for real. I went through cancer and everything. So another thing that set me down was when I got diagnosed with stage four. Mm. Like, I was still, I was pregnant with my third son. And what sat me down was all the stuff I was doing, drinking, smoking, weed, and, you know, like smoking a bunch of cigarettes back to back and all that stuff, man. That, yep. that really... It changed me, man. I had a tumor, tumor in my heart, uh, in my chest. I had a fluid around my left lung and around my heart, man. It, I was six months pregnant. I had to terminate pregnancy. Mm. And the thing is about it, to this day, I still think about that. But then after that, God let me get pregnant again in 2014. The only thing about that is I didn't have the cancer. Oh, and then that's... I lost that child due to what, you know, my circumstances and what my situation was in my 20s. In my 20s. You know what I'm saying? So I look at that today, I want, I just, all the girls out there, like, they try to be, like, too big than themselves and try to be grown, man, you're going to regret trying to be grown. You're going to be trying, before your time. Well, it's listen. A lot. It's, it's a lot to be yourself, too. Well, listen, the, the phone lines <coughs> is getting jammed up. My bad. Um, okay. We, I'm we, sorry about that. We, 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 we going to get it, we, we going to get it going again. Um. But All right. Thanks for calling, and we're going to we, we gonna get it going well, again, okay? All right, Dante. I appreciate you. No doubt. Okay. Yep. All right, so listen. Y'all got to understand this, too. Like what she was saying, you know, a lot of, a lot of people, we come from, we come from crazy backgrounds, and a, and a lot of people... Hold on one second. A, a lot of people, you know, we got to understand that a lot of people got trauma. A lot of people go through a whole lot. And, you know, hold on. All right, what's going on? What up, D? What's, what's up? What's up? Man, you doing your thing, man. Keep pushing it, man. Okay, I appreciate it. Who, who is this? Where you from? This is 
King Nico, man. I'm from North Carolina. Oh, okay. What's up? What's up? I I seen you. Yeah, man. Yo, I I did two bids down here in North Carolina, man. Hmm. And um, yeah, the first time I went to the U spread, man, it was it was gangland, man. And I used to bang myself. I used to be a crip, but I don't bang no more, man. But yeah, man, it was real in that, man. You got any? You got any crazy stories? Like, what's the craziest thing yeah. that you see? Well, the craziest thing that I seen was when I crashed out. Uh oh. Uh oh. Let, okay, let's get. Now this what happened. Okay. Yeah, this what happened. Right. I was in there. Well, I won't get no money. I was broke, so I had to sort people. Right. Yep. Okay. So every just like you said with the white boys, right? The white boys always be the target because this white boy he came through. It was me, because I was the only crip left in there. So it was me and the GDs, right? Yeah. So he came through, and we was trying to store him or whatever. And um, they were like, nah, man, ain't going to do that. Ain't going to do that. So we smashed him out, got him up out of there, and I went to Mac, MCOM. Hmm. Hold on, man. You just, you just blew past that. What you mean you smashed him out? Like, come on, give us the details. Like, I mean, we, we smashed him out, man. We beat him so bad that he had to go to the hospital and we was about to get street charges, but we ain't never get no street charges because I guess they ain't press charges or nothing. Oh, okay. Okay, you ever had to push that blade? Nah, I ain't never had to push that blade, but I had one. So you said your specialty was extortion, huh? Yeah. Okay. So give us the first time that you found yourself um, extorting somebody. Well, the first time, like I said, I came through. I was in processing, right? You know, like I said, I won't get no money because my family and my mom, they were trying to teach me a lesson because I got myself in there. So I wasn't expecting that for somebody. This is before I knew my wife. So, <clears throat> so them deal with my talking because I was saying, like I said, I was banging. I mean, I had the guys in there. You know, every time a white boy comes through, we'll store them. We were like, hey, you got to do this, do that. And if you don't do that, you already know what's going to happen. So, that's how I got my money. That was my hustle. I was the muscle. Did you have him, like, calling back home for them to send money in and he give it to y'all? No, see, what it was was whatever money he had coming in, we'll tell him to go to the store, the commissary, and get all the items for us. And that's what he'll do. Or if he did, we'll smash him out and get him up out of there. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, was, that was in my younger days, though, man. I was chilling when I um. When I got to the dope spray, because that that was when I was in the youth spray. Because the youth spray is the is the terror known man. A lot of fight. You like mm. just like I mean, this how it is. Like when you first get there in the youth spread, they don't want to know your name. They don't want to know where you're from. The first question they gonna ask you is what you bang off top. Uh. Now what yeah, if man, it's rough. I, what if you was man, was what if you wasn't affiliated? Then what what happens then? I mean, if you want to feel it, and all honesty, if you're a real man, you still down all, on all ten like you did. If you was a lone wolf, you'd be okay. But if you was soft, like you said, you could smell fear and stuff. It's true. Like I mean, as long as you was a man, had your business, you was good. Now, with this, I mean, they even they even tried me at first because they didn't know me right. So okay, boom. When I first got in there, I ain't know nobody, even though I was already clicked up. But they still didn't know me. So somebody stole my radio, right? Yeah. So. When somebody steals something or something for you, you gotta let it be known. Like you gotta go to the middle of the pie. Cause it was two tiers. It was it was bump beds and there was a tier on the top and a tier on the bottom. So I just came to the middle. Of, like whoever stole my radio, you gotta give me that fade. Hmm. So <laughs> yeah, and the guy that stole it, he he put it on my bed. I still had to run the fade with him because he disrespected me. You feel me? I was GP, so I ran that fade with him. I smashed him out. Cause I'm like I'm like six three back then. I'm six three. I was like two two oh five all month. This was the youth authority. Yeah, that was the youth authority. But those spread different. I mean, it's gang led too, but everybody laid back chilling. Yeah. But I was because like here in North Carolina, there's three levels. You got um minimum, medium, and max. And I was I went to max because um when we smashed old boy out, they sent me the max, and the max was like. M kind at twelve months, and I kind at six months, and they got H kind with that two years. But yeah, I went to max. So, mm. how long you been free? 
That's a blessing. I That's believe, a blessing. Yeah, man. I, I believe in God, man. I go to church and stuff, man. I just think you help me get through my day, man, because I've been listening to your show like every day while I'm at work. I'll be riding out. Hey, hey, listen. I appreciate that. You know what? People be asking me to make longer videos. And um, uh, like I get a lot of truck drivers that write me. And um, right now, y'all, I... <clears throat> I'm working on my movie. I'm actually about to go out of town tomorrow for for about four to five days. And um, I'm shooting this movie that's coming out on the 24th. Um, but I am working on, I'm working on all type of content, but right now I'm focusing on a movie. But every day, you know, I drop a video every day, but I haven't been doing no prison stories lately because I got other projects I'm working on. But um not next week but the following week i'm gonna start dropping the prison stories again but for the next five days i'm just gonna be working on this um movie that i'm working on shooting this movie but i will be dropping content every day though so you know it, it'll always be something again put out every day but um outside of that the prison stories will will resume Matter of fact, let me see exactly what day. I got a schedule on here. A lot of people been asking, like, what are prison stories? That what are prison stories? They coming, they coming. Um, on the nineteenth, I'm gonna start. I'm gonna I'm gonna start dropping the prison stories. But um, I'm doing the top tens, the top fives, or what not to do in prison, what to do in prison, the um, all type of stuff. So. Y'all, I, I'm going to have the content coming out, but I'm not doing no more prison stories to the 19th. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Oh, yeah, and I, I do want to clear something up, too, man, about North Carolina, man, the prison system, man. It ain't no booty bandits down here, man. <laughs> hmm. It ain't no booty bandits, man. Guys is already like that. They already like that. And like you say, there's guys in there that's already like that and it's giving it up. So it ain't no booty bandits. It ain't it ain't like the West Coast politics. It ain't separated by race. I mean it's gangland, but it's not like that. Wait, 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 wait. You you said where was where you at again? I'm in North Carolina. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Uh I thought for some reason when you said that I, I was talking to this other guy that's from Alabama. And he, uh -huh. he was telling me, like, it's crazy. He said there ain't nothing but bandits down there. It's like dudes roaming packs down there. Like his whole cliques nah, of bandits. Man. Nah, man. We, we would have got them guys up out of there, man. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but like you said, man, they ain't no booty bandits. They ain't nothing but bandits down there. It's like, because like the gangs, like, like you said, the gangs, they be running the phones, the poker tables, the store. I mean, they run pretty much everything. Like North Carolina, I mean, it's a lot of gangs, but the bloods is a dominant force. I mean, it's Bloods, Crips, and GDs, but the Bloods is a dominant force. They got the numbers, and then you got the GDs up under them. They number two, and the Crips come last. We always can't laugh at the numbers, but the ones I did know, though, they all went hard because we always been outnumbered. So, yeah. We getting anybody up out of there, we smashing them out. The, un the underdogs. But like, from, like, yeah, but like, where you from? Them Crips, you was there, like, who was like the dominant force, like, as far as like gangs and stuff? Was it the Bloods, the Crips, who? Well, for the black gays, of course it was the Bloods. But I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real with you. Um, I, Let's just, I'm going to just keep it real. I don't know what goes down in the South, but up here in the North, a lot of these dudes, when they, when they like you said, the numbers, right? It, it's a numbers game. And they, they will accept damn near anybody unless you got bad charges. Um, but who was really putting in the work? The Mexicans. The Mexicans. Yeah, man, the Migos, man, they, they stick together, man, no matter what. Like, I never seen none of them go hungry. Like, as soon as one of the, 
soon as one of the Migos come in and link up with the other Migos, they good, they give them shoes, they feed them, they have no trouble, they sit together, they real unified. That's what I was about to say, too. That's exactly, it. you know, and, and I never got that. That's why I could never join, like, I'm not affiliated with nothing. I just, like, like when I was locked up, a lot of dudes was, was turning Muslim. And I don't got, I didn't. I don't got no problem with how anybody program, but I just can't have nobody besides the guards in the system telling me what to do. Cause you know, that's day house. You know, I got to do what they tell me to do or I'm going to go to the hole. But outside of that, I can't have no other inmate dictating to me how to program or how to live my life up in here. And then I done seen where you would get these new, these new bloods, right? They'd come in and they and they they'll be used. They'll be used as a crash dummy to crash out. And it's like yeah. you go in there. I done seen real talk. I see I seen the guy come in there. He what? I think he had either six to eight months. He came in there for child support. Child support, right? Mm -hmm. They sent him to crash all the way out. Do end up catching four to five years. Four to five yeah, years. Man. Some guys like that just be crash dummies, man. But like I was saying, like, I didn't go to the prison and join the game. I was already banging on the streets before I got there. You yeah. know, the thing about it is, if you're in the gang or whatever, they'll try to validate you. It's called STG unit, you know. But they ain't never validate me because I always lie. Because you don't have to tell the officers that you bang or whatever. But, like... It's this place in North Carolina when you go through the prison system, you got to go to this place called Crave in the process. And um, mm. my caseworker can't ask me, like, you, are you a crib? I see your tattoos and stuff, but they couldn't never validate me. So I was good. But you got to you gotta check in within 24 hours if you game bag or they getting you up out of there. Wait a minute. So when you say check in, it, what, what was they doing? Because, like, when I was locked up in Ohio, um, when certain uh -huh. gang members come in, they yeah they call it checking in but it'll be basically you'll go over there with your crew and then y'all to get the fight and you got to fight to to basically show that like like you with it is, is that what you mean? No, what I mean was by checking in is like if you banging you gotta let it be known whatever you banging and you gotta check in with your people you jump in the car that you in like whatever you said but I mean it was different with the crib because like I said. It was lower numbers, so all of us had stuck together at the time because a lot of different sets and stuff. So what I mean by checking in is you go, you got to get g check. I mean, if you a lower rank than the, the highest person on the yard, you got to go get a G-check or whatever. But, I mean, I had rank. I had status. So I was good. Yeah. I mean, I'm just keeping real with you, man. A bunch of those guys be renegade, man. So, like, if you got the status and you got the rank, you ain't taking orders for nobody else, especially if you got the highest rank in your game. You you call the shots, you call the orders, you got that status. It's based on status and stuff. But like the bloods, like they different. Now, what is a G check? What what exactly is a G check? I mean, a G check is like if you're in the gang, you supposed to know certain knowledge, certain paperwork about the gang. That's a G check. Okay, because it's like yeah. it's it's like because okay, so like. You got different sets, right? Different crit yeah, sets, right? So yeah. it's like, how do you know, like, if somebody, if somebody, if you've been asked certain questions, is it like a general, a, a general question that the um the high ranking guy asks you, or like handshakes? Like, what what do that consist of? No, it, I mean, it consists of like you said, depending on your set. Each set has their own knowledge. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's set knowledge and it's universal knowledge. So, like, if you a crib from a different set and the crib try to check you and hear from your set, he might try to check you on, like, general crib knowledge instead of set knowledge because he can't check you on your set if you're not your set. And if you found out to be a false, pl a false flag, it did what happens? If you were false flag, you got smashed out. Or you had to flip upon him. Or you had to... <laughs> Or, or you had to flip up on whatever set the other person was that was checking. Because, like, prison, that's why I say it be renegade, man. Like, them games and stuff, man, like, they always talk about somebody's stuff ain't right, so they want you to flip up under them. And I won't go on for that. Uh. Yeah, 
there, man. They always want you to flip, man. That's almost everywhere they go. Like, the prison got its own politics as far as the gang. Like, you can have your own status and ranks on the street, but if it ain't matching up what they wanted to match up with, they're going to try to have you flip or whatever. But I ain't never had to flip or nothing because the set I was, it was already real deep in the prison cause well, listen, big dog, check this out. Um, we got a limit on here. The phone lines is getting jammed up right now. So, yeah, I'm going to start my own page, man. When I do come to a show, some love, man. Oh, yeah, I, I definitely will. I definitely will. I definitely will. I definitely will. You got the number. Just call me. We'll set something up. All right. All right. Yep. All right, what's going on in the comments section? Who is this talking about? Uh, you like the top 10 list? Yeah, I'm about to be working on that after I get done with this movie. Dante back on the K2 tonight. There you go. There you go, Retro. There you go with that again. Yo, Retro, you call in. What's up with you with all this K2 talk? What makes you think that I be on K2? What's wrong with you? What's going on with you? Dante on K2. What's going on with you? What's up, Black Leg Legacy Entertainment? What's up, Darius? What's up, Jazzy Jeff? Who else up in here? Where y'all from? Let me shout y'all out. Y'all let me know where y'all from so I can shout y'all out. Where y'all from? No, this is not a new mic. This is an old mic. Retro wants Sweet Low to be his bunkie. Maybe so. Yeah, man. Hey, listen. I'm letting y'all know right now. Um, I'm working on my movie starting tomorrow. I'm going to be gone for about four to five days shooting this movie. And I'm dropping it on the 24th. Make sure you become a member. Become a member, okay? Join my page and become a member so you can get full access, okay? You get access to the um, videos that nobody else get to see until days later and you'll be the first one to get access to the movie that i'm dropping on the 24th all right we got my man isaiah blake from charleston south carolina cinematic weston from vegas y'all we got black legacy from dallas but he all the way from st louis we got terry scott y'all from wisconsin can you make videos and go into history of individual that will be sick um Actually, already I already did it. Already, um, what's your name? Um, ancient, ancient grain fruit. I already did that. Um, I haven't put it out yet though, but I already did a whole series about that. I haven't put it out, but it's coming. Don't worry about it. I got that. Were you happy for Lil Kim when he got justice? Uh. I'm not 100% sure what you're talking about, real deal. We got Devin Disaster Yard from Branch, Virginia. We got Lex Bradley from Jersey. We got Ancient Grain Fruit from Sacramento, y'all, the 916. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, again, y'all, y'all um, go check out the last video that I uploaded too. All right, y'all go check out that video. It's called um It's the very last video. It's called Pretty Streetwalker told me street street work ran in her family. Y'all go check that out. Matter of fact, um yeah, y'all check that out. Matter of fact, one of them is about to drop at 7 o'clock. So, y'all make sure y'all check this out. And I'm about, to, I'm about to go out there and go shoot this movie tomorrow. Y'all be safe. 
And as always, if I if if it if we don't get to see each other no more, y'all make sure y'all ask Jesus to forgive y'all for all y'all sins. You know, because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen in the next second. So at the end of the day, you know, we got one life. You know, live your life to the fullest, but be real cautious. Be real cautious what you do. Try not to offend nobody, okay? If some, if you step on somebody's shoe, turn to them and apologize. If somebody opened the door for you and you walk in, turn to them and say thank you, okay? Say thank you. Somebody just lost their life in New York. Did y'all hear about that story in New York? A guy opened the door for a guy. He walks in. The other guy that opened the door for him follows him in and say, yo, you're not going to say thank you? The dude turned around, look at him like, yeah, whatever. Dude that opened the door wasn't feeling that. So y'all know what he did? He whipped out the Michael Myers. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Y y hold on, hold on. Can I paint the scene? I got y'all. Hold up. Y'all want another story? I got a story for y'all. Hold on, y'all. I got y'all. Hold up. Don't leave. I got you. So he opens the door for him. He opened the door. Are you, um, he walks in, he walks in. Yo, you going to say thank you? Yeah, right. I ain't telling you nothing. Whatever. Oh, it's like that for real? So you, so I hold the door for you and you can't say thank you? Hey, man, dude, shut up, man. I ain't tell you to hold the door for me. Hey, man, you ain't got to talk to me like that, man. I, I'm just saying, bro, you can't, you can't tell me thank you. Like, what's up with you? What's your problem? When somebody hope when somebody do something for you, you say thank you. Where's your manners at? Dude, like, man, dude, I said stop talking to me. I didn't tell you to hold the door for me. Listen, y'all, all it takes is to say thank you. Please. Right? So you know what dude do that opened the door for him? He whipped out. He whipped out. Oh, yeah, he whipped out. And he got to pushing that blade. He got to pushing that blade. A man lost his life in New York City because he didn't tell the guy that was being courteous to him that opened the door for him. Or a simple thank you. A simple excuse me can go a long way. When I tell y'all, and let me tell y'all something, all right? When y'all watch my videos and y'all don't hit that like button, know that I might come to you in your dreams and I might push that blade on you. I'm going to show up in your dreams and I'm going to push that blade. So when y'all watch my videos, y'all better hit that like button. Now let's get back to the story. So he bangs out on him with the knife. He bangs out on him with the knife. So you're not going to say, excuse me, huh? You're not going to say, thank you. So he get the, they, they, they are locked in mortal combat. Knife to knife, with knife to fist. And he's, he get to stab him, hitting him. The man bled out, bled out on the floor. Crazy. Just because he didn't say, thank you. When somebody takes time out to be kind, to be kind to you, to see you going the same way that they going, and they decide to open the door for you, you can't say thank you? You that toe up and broken minded that you can't say thank you? This man, and, and listen, it's not justified. Please listen to me. I don't condone no violence. I don't condone no violence. But come on, man. It's crazy because it's like this man lost his life for not saying thank you. But at the same time, what is a man's life worth? He should not have lost his life. Everybody have everybody has a choice to say to live the way that they want to live. Okay. Everybody have the choice 
to be rude, but that's not warrant your life getting snatched away. That doesn't warrant a knife getting pushed in you. We don't know too much about this guy that lost his life because he didn't say thank you. This kind of reminds me of that Popeye's sandwich thing, right? When, when people was losing their mind over a sandwich. And yeah, I taste the spicy chicken sandwich from Popeye's and I taste the original. What, what about it? It's just chicken. Yo, people are crazy. I know some of you people that's listening, y'all probably lost your cool in them lines too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But like I said, man, saying please, and yo, yo listen, if y'all got kids out there, if you got kids out there, teach your kids respect. Right, Shauna? Shawnee? Tr teach your kids to say thank you and please. Thank you, please, and excuse me. It's simple. It's simple. This man, if he would have just easily just turned around and said, thank you, bro. I appreciate that, bro. Thank you for holding the door, bro. He could have been still here right now. And I'm not saying that that it was his life being taken away from him was justified. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is a little courtesy goes a long way. Right? A little courtesy goes a long way. But it is what it is. Check this out, y'all. Tomorrow, I'm leaving 7 o'clock in the morning. And I'm flying out to Arizona to shoot this movie. I'm going to be gone for four days, maybe even five days. But I'm dropping a video every day for y'all, so chill. Okay? A video still will be dropped every day. But for the... For the next four to five days, I'm out. I got to make this video, okay? If you are not a member of Lockdown 88, the Dante Show, when you subscribe to the channel, a join button pops up. Matter of fact, I'll show you all right now. Here you go. Y'all see that right there? It say join right there. Y'all see that? Click that button. Become a member. I'm dropping my movie December 24th. You got special access to that. All right? Once you become a member, you get to see the videos that nobody else get to see until way later. When you become a member, you'll get full access to the movie that I'm dropping on December 24th. Right? So become a member. Also, when you become a member, y'all see Life with Cynthia. Y'all see that? Y'all see Lisa Love? Y'all see that? The badge? You say the Dante Show badge? Y'all get y'all a badge that comes with that. Right? Y'all get y'all a badge with y'all in the comment section. So... I'm just saying, y'all, life, life, people take a lot of things for granted. Sometimes we got to stop complaining so dang much. Yeah, we finna go there. I'm about to go in. Can I go in, y'all? Can I go in just, just a little bit right quick? Can I go in just a little bit? Let me know in the comment section. Y'all type in yes if y'all want me to go in. Am I talking to myself right now? Type yes in the comment section if y'all ready for me to go in. Come on, let's go. Bray Braden Henderson, what's up? Oh, yeah, I'm live, baby. Don't worry about it. Type yes in the comment section if y'all really want me to go in. What's up, Jax G? 
Let's go. Devontae Hill, come on, man. We ain't about to play them. Hey, Devontae Hill, we not about to play them type of games. We ain't about to play them type of games. Do y'all want me to go in? Okay, no homo. Come on, y'all. Let's stop playing games. Let's go. Y'all ready? So, hold on. Let me fix this mic. We finna wild out tonight. We about to wild out. Do it look professional? Does it look professional enough? Y'all hit that like button. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. I'm about to put the cash app back up. Hold on. I'm about to go in. Just give me a second. There you go. There you go right there. All right, listen. Stop complaining so much. There's always somebody that's living, that their living condition is way worse than yours. Some of us complain so much that we don't realize that we are living in a better situation than a lot of other people. If you can go into a home where it's warm at, you got a bed to lay in, you got food in the refrigerator, the, the consumer energy on, you got electricity, right? You got water flowing through the pipes. You ain't got to worry about nobody kicking in your dough. You ain't got to worry, man, listen. I'm not talking about the guys. Matter of fact, I, I am going to go there. There's guys that's locked up in prison right now, in in jail. They sitting in a cell right now. They don't got no money on their books. They don't got no commissary in their locker. They hungry. They just had their third meal of the day. That you barely get. You you barely get it. Barely it barely curbs your appetite. It just fill that void in just a little bit. You got the freedom to go downstairs right now and go get you some bread, some Miracle Whip, and some turkey and put some onions on it. Cut that in half and get you some Fritos and drink you some lemonade. There's a guy that's sitting on a bunk right now. They're starving. His stomach to his back. There's a guy right now that's living under a bridge. There's a woman right now that's living under a bridge. It's cold outside. The only... Listen. I get it. We all go through things. We all have our issues. But the reality is we need to start being more kind kind be be a little bit more nice to people you never know what you never know what a simple hello can do to somebody day you never know what a simple hey how you doing right hey how you doing you never know you can walk to walk up to a woman that could be in an abusive relationship. That she's just so stressed out. That she she thinking about just throwing it all away. Taking her own life. Because she's just so tired of living. Every time she turns around, it's something. It's always something. And she like, you know what? I'm done. I'm about to go take these pills, right? And take all these pills and follow it with a bottle of Hennessy. If I don't wake up, it is what it is. There's some people out there that are so stressed out with life, right? That if you would just say, hey, how you doing? Hey, you know, 
that could change somebody's whole trajectory in life. That's a simple high. I got to share something too. And I know the fellas, fellas, please listen to me. If if this doesn't, if it, uh, what, if it don't apply, let it fly. Okay. This is for the fellas right now, but ladies, I, I have to, I have to say this. I got a very, very disturbing email. The young lady told me, don't say my name because I don't want, I don't, if, if the guy finds out about this, but I want you to still share my story. She said that she met this dude at her job. Cool. We all meet people. She said she's, she was single and he supposedly was single. He'd buy her lunch every day. He'd keep trying to wine and dine her on a job. She said this would go on for about two months. So she finally gave in. She went out on a date with him. And they end up sleeping together. Come on, y'all. We know we all done slept with somebody on the first date. So let's stop playing these games. She slept with this guy on the first date. He done wired to dine for two months. So she finally gave it up to him. Well, turns out that's all he wanted. He just wanted to get his rocks off. So now when, when, when she goes back to work, hey, how you doing? He just look her up and down and walk off. Not only when he walks off, there's people snickering, looking around, right? She's like, why is people, okay, whatever. We're we going to skip past all the theatrics. He tape record. He tape recorded them being intimate. Oh, yeah. He tape recorded it. Showing everybody. This woman has two kids. This woman gave herself to a scumbag piece of crap. Hold on, y'all. Let me say that again because y'all told me to go in, right? This woman laid down with a demon that recorded her having sex with him. This dirtbag, lowlife, piece of shit. Garbage. Garbage. This low life, piece of shit, garbage, right? Garbage that need to be thrown in the trash can. It's sick people, broken minded people out here that will whine and dine you. Why and dine you? For what? And did you take me? What was the whole motive here? Y'all be careful. Be careful. Be women. Listen to me. Be careful of that handsome guy that you got an eye on when he come in and work. Oh, he cute. But I ain't going to talk to him. He look like a hoe. Believe that. The dude probably is a hoe. But wait a minute. He only showing you special attention. He keep smiling at you. He keep coming to you, everyone. Hey, beautiful. Right? Lunchtime. Oh, don't worry about that, baby. I got you. Hey, can I take you out to the movies? Can I take you out to eat? Hey, you want to go skating? Let's go do painting with a twist. Now he tapping into your feminine side. Crazy, right? He did all this for two months. And she, when she finally gave him the cat, he tape records it. He show everybody in the warehouse. The woman was bullied. The video circulated around. Imagine, I mean, being humiliated, embarrassed. Like for what? This woman told me that she was contemplating suicide. 
She said, just leave my name out of it. But I want you to tell the story for me. She was contemplating suicide, y'all. I tell y'all, she grabbed the pills. And she was going to swallow them and follow it with the Hennessy. And if I wake up, I just wake up. If I don't, well, the pain would stop. The humiliation would stop. But no, it don't stop. Because you got kids. You got a mother, a father, cousins, sisters, brothers, somebody that loves you. And if you leave this world, you don't know who that's going to. A lot of people, people got to understand. And I'm not talking about nothing being selfish, okay? I'm not saying about if you take your own life because you just cannot deal, deal with, with the problems and the issues of this world. I'm not saying that. Oh, that's the coward way out. Nobody can tell nobody how to deal with their trauma. If you punch me in the face, how anybody going to tell me how to react? How you going to tell? If somebody walk up to me and punch me right in the mouth, and I don't, and I don't display extreme violence, you can't tell nobody how to react to your pain. When people are in pain, you cannot, the rules is a, the rules of engagement is off. So you mean to tell me, hey, Dante, what's up? I'm outside. Okay, cool. Hey, Dante, what's up, man? Look out the window. I look out the window, somebody standing in front of my car with a brick, and boom. And then I go outside, and I push that blade, right? Don't tell me. Oh, you took it too far. It was just a window. Every action has a reaction. Know that. Every action has a reaction. Y'all supposed to been off live. We are we 42 minutes in. Again, we are hour and 42 minutes in. 42 minutes ago, I supposed to been off the live. But we rocking out, right? Let's go ahead and rock out. Let's rock out. I talked to this woman for at least four days straight. Giving her guidance. Giving her counseling. Right? And she's in a better place right now. She's doing good. She done moved in. She, done, she left. She, she took her and her kids. And she moved in with her mother, four states away where she was living at. Crazy, right? And yes, you're absolutely right. Hit that like button or me and Dante going to push that blade in your dreams. <laughs> Dang right. But listen, y'all, I got to roll. It's been fun. It's been nice. Again, if you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, accept him. Because none of us know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? None of us know. Have y'all noticed that every time, and I know it's, it seems like I'm rambling, but lately it just seemed like a lot of people have been losing their life. And I know people die every day, but a lot of people that I know personally and surrounding me, has been losing their life. And it seems like you, you tell that to the person, for the people that be talking about, oh, oh, Dante always talking about the Bible. Dante always trying to push this spirit, spiritual thing, right? What if, what, what if, I'm just saying, what if Jesus is real? What if, what, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, what if the only thing you have to do is accept him as your Lord and Savior and all your sins is wiped away and you re and you repent and turn from your wicked, evil ways? And that's and that's the admission to get into heaven. What if what what if it what if it's really that simple?
What if it's really that simple? There we go. Come on. What if it's really that simple? I don't know. But I do know this, though. None of us know the day and time of our death. None of us. None of us. So, treat people kindly. I used to say treat people like you want to be treated, but some of us want to be treated dirty. And that's a fact. So, treat people with kindness. Give to those that you owe. If you got it, don't withhold. If you owe somebody, give that, whatever you owe to somebody, give it to them. Don't withhold. If you owe somebody, give them what you owe. Happy holidays, y'all. It's almost Christmas, right? Some people didn't make it. Some people ain't even going to make it to the new year. Some people was not even going to make it to the new year. So be thankful, y'all. Be thankful that you're here. This is the Dante Show, Lockdown 88. I'm out, y'all.